Hi, everybody. So this is the third lecture for the special census. And uh, the focus will be on your ears and the anatomy of the ear. So uh, looking at the ear, uh, first thing I want you guys to understand in, in terms of uh, gross anatomy, uh, it is made up of three sections of what we identify as external or outer ear. The middle ear, which has the three smallest bone in your body called ossicles. And internal uh, ear uh, or inner ear, uh, which is responsible for two main functions of hearing as well as equilibrium. So let's go ahead and take a look at the picture of your um, eye first. Um, sorry, your ears, not eyes. <laughs> uh, so here is basically your external ear. External ear is made up of basically what we identify or more visible to us. So you have the kind of the ear lobe, um, which made up of the um, oracle or pina, which is the top port, the helix, which is cartilaginous as well, and then coming down to the lobule part, which contains significant amount of fatty tissue. The second part of the external ear is where the sound actually travels through your ear called the external acoustic meatus. Uh, this word should sound very familiar to you since we already discussed it as one of the opening on the side of the skull associated with the temporal bone. The middle ear, which is depicted right here, is made up of uh, three bones. So one, two, three, and we'll talk about the names in just a second, but just kind of introducing the names. Uh, they are in order, malleus, incus, and a stapes. And the separation between external and middle ear is what we identified as the eardrum, which is called tympanic membrane. The last part of your ear is called internal or inner ear, which is this structure made up of three, three parts. The kind of the structure that looks like the shell of the snail called the cochlea. The midsection right here called the vestibuli. And what we identified as these half circles called semicircular canals. And there are three of them, even though this picture only shows two of those structures. So again, external ear, we already talked about them uh, in picture. You have the oracle, which is uh, the larger part of the ear, also called pina the cartilaginous helix, and the fatty tissue uh, that is called the lobule. Please do understand that the main function of your external ear to collect vibrations of the sound and pass it to the next part of the ear, which is called the middle ear. External auditory canal or acoustic meatus, it is a short tube. Uh, one interesting component of that is that it does contain uh, um, earwax, which are modified uh, sebaceous glands. Oh, sorry, I should say modified sebaceous. It does contain both sebaceous gland and um, ceruminous, uh, which is producing your earwax. And they also contain um, tiny amount of hair. And the main goal is basically prevent things, uh, external objects from getting into your ear, including uh, insects and dust particles. And again, the goal of this is to transmit the wave or vibrations of the sound through your um, air, uh, hearing passageway. And tympanic membrane, which is your next structure, is um, this kind of a flattened funnel shape. And again, it's this goal is to transmit a vibration to the next part, which is called auditory ossicles. Um, so if you take a look at this, this is the structure we're talking about. That's your tympanic membrane. Um, again, it does look like a flattened funnel. Uh, you also have a secondary structure called auditory pharyngeotympanic tube, uh, which is essential for equalizing air pressure. And this structure is the tube that you see right here. Um, also, sometimes people refer to it as your station tube. Um, 
and if uh, you have um, children or you've been around kids when they are susceptible to ear infection, uh, basically, typically the infection goes from the pharynx, which is the throat, up through this uh, pharyngeal panic tube and reaches the middle ear that causes the infection. Now, what are the bones or the ossicles within the middle ear? These three are, again, as I mentioned, are malleus, incus, and estrapes. And uh, it notices it says estrapes merges from a structure, or sorry, merges into a structure called oval window. So let's take a look at our picture. So one bone right here, bone number two, and bone number three. So malleus, incus, estrapes. Notice the area right here where your uh, stapes connects into your inner ear, that kind of a shape, it's oval shape. So it's referred to as the oval window. And then inferior to oval window, you have a circular indentation, which is referred to as the round window. For this purpose, I'm not, for this lecture, I'm not gonna go into too much details about the structure, sorry, not the structure necessary, the function of these structures, but we do briefly go over the um, general function of these structures. Now, within your middle ear, holding the bones of your middle ear, you have two uh, small skeletal muscles, uh, and these muscles are referred to as the tensor tympani muscles, which you can see right here. And the other one you see right here connecting to your stapes is called a stapedis uh, muscle. Um, the goal of these uh, two muscles is to limit the vibrations of these ossicles when your ear is exposed to very loud noise. Understand that if these bones are damaged, you lose the ability to transmit the vibration of the sound all the way into the inner ear. So when you hear hearing loss as a result of damage, as a result of loud sound, maybe I should say, um, is one of the main reasons is that uh, the vibration actually causes damage to the three ossicles in your middle ear. And one way that your body tries to prevent that is by having uh, these muscles that try to stabilize and limit the movements of these bones during very loud noises. Inner ear is depicted right here. Um, again, three structures or segments, uh, three half circles called semi or semicircular canals, vestibuli, which is the midsection, and the snail uh, shell, which is referred to as the cochlea. Now, let's just start with vestibuli because vestibuli is the middle section. It does contain two structures, and again, without me going into details about these structures, they're called utricle and sacculi. So the utricle and sacculi, which are depicted right here. Again, this whole thing is the vestibuli, and these are smaller structures inside <clears throat> our utricle and sacculi. What is the importance of these two structures? They are responsible for creating the sensation of gravity and linear acceleration. So what does that mean? So when you're in an elevator and you feel the elevator either moving up or down, it's the vestibule doing its job using the uh, organs utricle and sacculi. When you're sitting in a car and you notice the car either slowing down or speeding up, that's linear acceleration that is also done by your vestibuli. Remember vestibuli, we already heard of it before when we talked about central nervous system in terms of vestibular sense, correct? As a sense of balance or positioning of the head in the space. Semicircular canal, there are three of those, and I'm just going to show it to you and then we'll talk about them. So we have one up here, um, which is referred to as your anterior one. You have one in the back, which is this one called the posterior, and one is kind of coming on the side called lateral. So these are actually positioned from about 90 degrees from one another. Why is that important? 
because when you look at the one that is anterior, so anterior semicircular canal or SC, um, is the one that allows you to create or uh, to feel the motion when you move your head, yes. So basically moving your head forward and back. Um, lateral uh, semicircular canal is the one that motions or measures or notices the changes when you move your head side to side, as I'm saying no. Posterior semicircular canal is the movement when you tilt your head to either side. So it figures out which direction your head is moving. Again, they are roughly uh, angled about 90 degrees from one another. Uh, there are dilations at the end of the semicircular canals, uh, referred to as the ampulla, which connects to the vestibuli. And the way it works in a very basic terms, uh, you have <clears throat> receptors that are located on the side. And when you turn your head to one side, um, those receptors get activated and the receptors on the opposite side, sides are inhibited. So think about it as you have activation and inhibition, and this interaction can figure out, allows your body and your brain to figure out which direction your head is tilting the wood. <clears throat> so ampulla, I mentioned it earlier, is these the structure, these enlarged ending of the semicircular canals. And the last part of your ear is a structure called cochlea. So cochlea is a, a snail shell. Uh, it does contain uh, chambers and different type of fluid. Um, these fluid are filled with uh, perilymph and endolymph, and I'll show you that in just a second. And the structure and the fluid, sorry, I should say the chambers that contain the perilymph as an around, the fluid that is following around, uh, are found in cavity called scalas vestibuli and a scala tympani. Now, the word should just start to trigger something for you, right? Vestibuli implies that they're closer to the vestibuli part of the ear, and tympani would be area that is connected to your tympanic membrane or moving toward the tympanic membrane. So here is your shell, your snail shell, or your cochlea opened up or unwinded. So notice what you see in blue is your two cavity, which is filled with the perilymph. The top one, see how it starts from the oral window and connected to the vestibuli. So this top one where I'm drawing the arrow first, this would be your scala vestibuli. And again, the fluid is still blue and adds perilymph. The one that is going on the bottom, it ends at the round window, which is facing the tympanic membrane. Oh, sorry, guys. So say tympanic membrane would be somewhere over here, and these would be the location for your ossicles, including the stapes. <clears throat> so because it's moving toward that, toward your tympanic membrane, that's referred to as what? A scala tympani. Please do note the fluid is still considered perilymph. It's the same fluid that's flowing in your scala vestibuli on the top. A scala vestibuli starts with the oval window and a scala tympani ends with the round window. So kind of again doing that uh, circle. Now you do have a cavity right at the center. Uh, that cavity is uh, a cavity that contains what we identify as endolymph and the cavity itself is called a, a cochlear duct. Cochlear duct is where you have the capacity to convert vibrations of the sound to electrical impulses. So cochlear duct, the middle chamber uh, that we saw in the previous picture in green, this cavity, that's your cochlear duct. Uh, it is fluid called endolymph, as I mentioned earlier. Now within this cochlear duct, um, which is also called um, a scala media, um, it contains a structure called a spiral organ of corti. What is the importance of this? What is the importance of a spiral organ of corti? Is it takes the mechanical vibrations of sound, right? These are actual physical um, 
a, a sound vibrations and convert it to what? Nerve impulses, which is electricity. Now, what gives the spiral organ of Corti the capacity to convert the mechanical sound to electricity are cells called hair cells. Hair cells are located within a structure or associated with a membrane called the basilar membrane. And that's the layer that separates the scala media from your scala tympani. I know it sounds overwhelming, so let's take a look at it in terms of a picture to help you understand a little bit better. So, notice you have three chambers. This is very similar to what we discussed here in this picture. So, the top, bottom, and sorry, the top, middle, and bottom. So, they're just showing you a cross section of that right now. So, what you do, what does that look like? Here is a scale of vestibuli on the top, which contains again what? Perilymph. All the way at the bottom, which was the blue area, is the scale of tympanic, which is also containing perilymph. And in the middle of that, sorry about the sirens, guys. And in the middle of that, you have the cochlear duct, which is now contained this structure right here. Okay, so what is that? That's your organ of corti. So let's take a look at a zoom in version of that. So again, same picture, right? A scale of vestibuli on the top, tympani on the bottom, and the cochlear duct in the middle. This membrane where you see right here, that's called the basilar membrane. Again, this structure you have right here would be your organ, a spiral organ of Corti. What do I have in the spiral organ of Corti? If I zoom in, it contains what? Hair cells, right? What is the importance of hair cells? It converts the mechanical vibration of sound to electrical impulses. So now electricity needs to be picked up by something, right? It's, it needs to be picked up by neurons or nerves. So where is it being picked up? You see these yellow extensions right here? These are called what? Cochlear nerve. Where do you think cochlear nerve is gonna end up at? At your temporal lobe, which gives you the capacity to hear. So if I ask you guys, show me or write down the path of um, your hearing pathway. What does that look like? Again, use your logic. I know the information is here, but let's use our logic and go through it. So somewhere over here, you have your, um, your external uh, ear, which just starts with the pina your external auditory meatus or your external auditory canal. The vibration of the sound hits your tympanic membrane and those vibration gets passed down to your malleus, then to your incus, and then eventually into your estates. From there, that the oval window, the electrical impulses are, sorry, not the electrical impulse, the vibration of the sound are going to go through the, um, scala vestibuli and when they reach the proper location within the cochlea they're going to go through the cochlear duct so see this is your cochlear duct right here right this structure they're gonna go through the cochlear duct and they're going to go and move the hair cells and the hair cells are going to convert the electrical, sorry, convert the vibration of the sounds to electrical impulses. Now, the electrical impulses that are created by the cochlear duct gets picked up by your cochlear nerve, which is you see right here. And where is cochlear nerve take that signal? It takes it to the uh, primary auditory cortex, which is located on the temporal lobe, which you can see right here. So sound vibration travels through external auditory canal, goes through your three bone, malleus, incas, and estapes, and eventually reaches the fluid that is the perilymphs in the scalar vestibuli. It eventually, at the correct uh, wavelength, it gets passed to uh, the endolymphs, which is the cochlear duct or your scalar media. 
hair cells within this region convert the sound vibration into your electrical impulse, which is your action potential. And those action potential now travel through the cochlear nerve, which is cranial nerve number three, to what we identify as thalamus. And uh, thalamus eventually sends that message to the temporal lobe, which is again located on the side of the brain or the lateral aspect of the brain. The only thing that I do want to talk to you before uh, I finish up the PowerPoint is um, in these pictures that I have shown you, the only nerve that we have, sorry, uh, I'm gonna go back track one second. If you go back to this picture, notice that your nerve, there's a nerve that is originating from your there's a nerve that is originating from the cochlea, and that's the cochlear nerve. But you also have nerve branches that are coming from the vestibule, which is right here. So these two eventually merge together and form one large nerve called vestibulocochlear nerve, as a merging of the vestibule with the cochlea. And that new structure is, uh, eventually goes into your brain. Uh, so um, the job of the vestibular nerve was to uh, create the um, sense of balance um, and then your cochlea job was to create your sense of hearing. So that's about it for this PowerPoint. Um, we'll see you for the next unit, which is your unit four, uh, that will cover digestive system, reproductive system, and urinary system.